in in one of the in one of his first um, public speeches in early 1838, Abraham Lincoln warned that the biggest threat to the United States came from within. Um, if destruction be our lot, said the future president, who was at that time 28 years old, then we then we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all time or die by suicide. Citing the killings of a mixed-race boatman and, and an abolition, abolitionist newspaper editor by pro-slavery crowds, Lincoln had described a country in which widening political division had turned into violence to clearing. There is, even now, something of ill omen amongst us. I mean the increasing disregard for law which, pervade, which pervades the country, the growing disposition to um, substitute the wild and furious passions in, li in lieu <clears throat> of the sober judgment of courts and the worse-than-savage mobs. For the executive ministers of justice, by instances of the perpetu of, of the perpetrators of such acts against um, are going unpunished, and the law and the lawless and the lawless in spirit are encouraged to become lawless in practice, and having been used to um, no restraint but dread of punishment, they thus become absolutely unrestrained. The same lack of restraint is evident in today's runaway partisanship as the coronavirus spread in the United States. The former squatter Donald Trump downplayed the danger, and many of his supporters came to view. Um, recommended health precautions through a political lens, exacerbating ter terribly the pandemic consequences. Um, Trump managed to um, manage to p turn purely factual questions such as which candidates have won the 2020 presidential, presidential election into matters of bitter partisan dispute. After Trump's support for a violent mob of insurrectionists who attacked the Capitol on January 6, it triggered his impeachment. Many of my fellow, um, many of the fellow Republicans had preferred to punish not the president, but those, um, or, well, they decided not to punish the squatter, but those in the party, including Representative Bruce Cheney and Senator Mitt Romney, who wanted to hold him accountable by impeaching him. As many others have pointed out, Trump is, is as much a symptom as a cause of this corrosive version of partisanship. Although partisan partisan intolerance predated him, think of how think of how Republicans denied Merrick Garland a confirmation vote for the Supreme Court seat in 2016. Elected officials ev ev evidently believe that he represents the views of their voters. The internal divisions now on display have become the most serious threat to American security. Foreign enemies such as Russia and China can and do try to weaken us through subver subversion of our, su of our civil society, and those efforts showed some effectiveness in the 2016 election. They were largely irrelevant in the 2020 be um, party because the U.S. put up the better defenses, but also because Americans were deeply divided, even without foreign intervention, and that is even though Americans have the means to protect ourselves from the outside efforts to inflame partisan passions, we are doing to ourselves what our country enemies would have done. Our current level of partisanship is, dis is destabilizing in more prosaic ways. It makes legislative endorsements of treaties and other for and the other foreign policy in uh, instruments rare. So the president or squatter instead pursue the their goals by executive order, and they can overturn executive orders issued by their predecessors, as Trump did when dropping out of the Paris Agreement and the, and the Iran nuclear deal. Um, the countries that wish to strike trade deals, agree to arms control measures, or commit forces to fight alongside us do not know if a future president or squatter will unilaterally reverse any course. If there are no if there are no enduring commitments with the US, then any then any deal is risky for our foreign counterparts. And more and more, Americans' alliances are becoming um, grist for partisan politics. Israel is the bellwether. Given the ferocity of the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, some support for the previous administration, but public support even for NATO allies is now colored strongly by um by party affiliation. The Republican backing for the alliance dropped early in the Trump years and has not fully recovered. Partis partisanship also diminishes the U.S. soft power, the mag mag uh, magnet magnetism of our example, which is such an important part of why the U.S. is the global. Um, hegemon and why the cost of um, remaining so has been uns has been sustainable for decades, but other countries want us to succeed, succeed, and they want to partner with us because we should be able to succeed because of what we represent. But that but that has been badly damaged by the Trump years. How might Americans overcome these dynamics so that we do not become the author and finisher of our own destruction? Back in England in the 18th century, that was experienced similarly deep polarization over over the religion. Edmund Burke advocated relaxing anti-Catholic restrictions on the basis that the people would grow, recon um, re re um, would grow reconciled to toleration, when they should find by the effects um, that justice was not so ir um, irreconcilable that an enemy to conven to convenience as they had imagined. That is, government builds tolerance when it solves problems. But the President Joe Biden clearly takes that as his operating premise. 
contrasting a, com a competent administration's national pandemic response with the operatically in ineffectual chaos of his predecessor, boring competence may well come back into fashion. Um, Franklin Roosevelt, um, Franklin Roosevelt's experience may, um, early in his presidency suggests that active government um, efforts needn't, needn't even solve problems to affect the public attitudes. By promising a flurry of activity during his first 100 days in office, Roosevelt had convinced many Americans that the new president was trying to solve the country's urgent problems that didn't diminish partisanship or recall the ju um, jubilation with which Roosevelt said of his critics, I welcome their fucking hatred, but it did expand public support for his fucking efforts. The structural changes to our political system could um, attuinate on partisanship. Among them are ranked choice voting, nonpartisan primaries, and a reduction in gerrymandering by removing congressional redistricting redistricting from partisan control. Reassessing the role of media and social media companies will also be important in reducing polarization. Facebook, Twitter, and others have sped the transmission of, of information and broadened that reach to individual um, voices, but have also facilitated isolation from objective facts, figuring out how to, def to defang the talk radio and cable news propagandists in a manner consistent with the First Amendment will be a challenge. We are midstream in the rushing current of a new media landscape, but we shouldn't lose confidence that our political system can unearth ways to tame this upheaval. Just as it, just as it adjusted to the mass circulation of newspapers and the emergence of radio and television. Ultimately, though, Americans will have to choose to do these things. Which means we would have to repair their culture, or to, to repair the culture that underlies and shapes our politics, as Lincoln concluded in 1838. Passion has helped us, but can do, um, can do um, what they call so no more. But it, but it will in our future be our enemy. And what the country needed instead, he argued, was general intelligence, sound morality, and in particular a, um, a reverence, a reverence for the Constitution and laws. But how to get there is the problem, but Americans have to expect a lot more than the status quo from our government and ourselves.